What's up guys? Now, we all have our favorite fighters. Imagine how beneficial, how amazing it would be to spend two weeks with one of our idols. Imagine everything you could learn from them. And back in 2008, I had the opportunity to spend about 14 days with Bokao. Now, although two weeks is granted not that much time, I learned loads from him and about him. I got lots of funny stories, little, little things that you might have not heard if you've watched his fights before, the kind of person he is. And because of the language barrier, obviously we were not communicating a whole lot, but me watching him, seeing his routine, it gave me so much insight on what you need to do to be one of the very best fighters in the world. So today I'm gonna share all that information with you guys. Now, from the beginning of my career, I remember hearing something Bokao said, whoever trains the hardest will win. Now that really, really resonated resonated with me and I have had that mentality for a lot of my career. If I don't train harder than my opponent, I might not win. But traveling to Thailand and training with Bacau was a little bit of a myth buster situation for me because you often hear about fighters who do these ridiculous training routines and Bacau was one of them. I had heard that he trains two times a day four hours per session for an eight, like a total of eight hours of training per day. He runs 10 kilometers two times per day. And the list just went on and on. I mean, it was just going, holy smokes, this guy is an animal. So when I got to Thailand, I was expecting ridiculous work when I went to Port Pramok, which was his gym at the time. Now, although you could argue maybe he was burnt out, he'd already won two K1 max titles, so it could just be that, but he did not train nearly as hard as people said. He would join for the runs, he would do probably three rounds of pad work, a little bit of clench work with us, but really he wasn't training like an animal, like I was expecting him to train. And he was only three weeks away from a fight. Now, Let's talk about the fight because when I came back from Thailand and I watched him compete, I'm like, oh no, Bokao, what happened? It was his first KO loss that I was aware of, especially his first KO loss within K1 and a Japanese fighter named Sato, who Bokao had already beat a number of times, put him down, actually KO'd him and it was a pretty dramatic looking KO. So an easy argument for saying, oh, you know what? He didn't train that hard, he lost. So obviously he needs to train hard. Everybody needs to train hard, that is valid but I've also heard from a number of people that know him very well that since 2008 onwards, yes, he trains hard, but he would take fights, the pretty minimal amount of training, not what I was used to hearing that he used to do. Now, there is something to be said for when you're in the early part of your career, you have that fire, you don't know how hard you have to push, you just grind, grind, grind. So maybe he did that and then he learned after a while, like, you know what, I don't have to. But overall, it was a myth buster situation for me. The big takeaway for me was, yes, you need to train hard, but you don't need to be training four hours twice a day. If anything, I've learned that condensing everything down and getting really good hard training sessions is better for your body longevity wise. So having the opportunity to in person see Bacow train and then also hear how Bacow trains and see there are two very different things that was very eye opening for me and it gave me the ability to go, oh, you know what? I can train as hard as Bacow. I was at his gym and even though he might have not been pushing as hard as normal and what we were doing when we were there was totally reasonable. Now, if you're a fan of Bokao, especially from back in the K1 Max days, he always seemed very reserved, very quiet, very respectful. And I was expecting that when I got to the gym. And let me tell you something, this guy was a joker. He, he's really the class clown, which was so surprising to me. I remember when we got there, he would be you know messing around with people. He'd have a little lighter. He'd start it up and start chasing people around, pretending he was trying to light them on fire. He was just always, you know, that guy who's kind of poking at people and turn away and then poking them again. He was doing that to his, his, his training buddies all the time. But all in all, he seemed like a really good guy, a really, really loving guy. I was super surprised. I, like I said, I was only there for two weeks and I got to do a few things outside of the camp with him. And then the day I was leaving, he came over and he gave me a hug and he could speak a little English. He's like, oh, sad, sad. And I was like, oh, okay, well, either the gym's paying him a lot to make sure that people come back, or he's just a really authentic guy and he really actually cared about having people there. And I think that was the case. Now, something else that I noticed when I was there is, you know, we only ate twice a day. We, we would train in the morning, sort of, I'd say six to eight in the morning, and then we'd have one meal. And then we train again more, more like 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. or maybe it was four to six, and then we eat again. And those two meals overall were fairly healthy. You know, it was just, it was food from Thailand. We had rice, we had curries, 
We had lots of other things. Overall, very healthy and very similar to the way I've conducted myself in terms of eating food. Be healthy, put good things in your body, it's your fuel. Now, the thing that really surprised me when I was there, I'm going, this guy is a two-time, not even a one-time, a two-time K1 Max champion. He must just be fueling his body so well. And granted, the meals were healthy. Like I said, it's just food from Thailand. It's always healthy. But in between, there were snacks and there was a fridge filled up with pop and he would be drinking that all the time. And for me, that's something I don't put in my body if there's chemicals in it, if it's colored. I remember popping open this, this can of soda and he was like, oh, he brought it over for me after a hard, a hard round of pads. He's like, drink it. And it was just liquid green, like, like green ooze from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I drank it because I was so thirsty and so skinny when I was there, just because we were burning so many calories. But once I got back home and I reflected, I was just like, man, these guys are not putting good solid nutrients in their body in between meals. Now that's definitely not to say that I came back now and I went, ah, oh, but cow didn't eat healthy all the time. I don't need to eat healthy. I still eat very healthy. It was just something of a shock to me. Now, if you've been on my channel a while, if you've watched other episodes, you may have noticed me talk about bacow. I sprinkle it in here and there, little stories, but I'm gonna go back over a story that was, it just made me laugh. Now, as I mentioned, he wasn't training as hard as possible, but I was expecting to go there and see bacow when we went running, you know, at the front of the group, front of the pack, pushing the pace. And he was actually a relatively slow runner when I was there. Again, he might have had an injury, just maybe he was burnt out. But the funny story is one day I was running. I was sort of, I think, about halfway through the pack of people. There was no, there were some people in front of me, but there was nobody behind me that I could see. And I remember as I was running down the road in the bushes, I just heard somebody go, psst, psst. And I look over and it's Bokau. He's hiding in the bushes and uh, we can't communicate again, but he's like, and he ends up taking me on a shortcut through the woods. So instead of going all the way around doing this full run, he just kind of cuts through so he can end up back where we started. And the trainer is always in the back on his scooter. He's got a little stick. He kind of like came along and whipped the guys in the bum if they were going too slow. So he didn't know. And I only saw Bacow do this once. So granted, maybe it was just his little thing for the days where he's burnt out because I have those days. And if I had a trainer pushing me all the time, being like, you need to go, go, go. And my body's just in that fatigue point where I'm just like, you know what? Instead of doing a full day, I'm gonna do 50% or I need the whole session off. Maybe he was just like that on that particular day and he just knew he had to just take that little shortcut and he had to give his body a rest. But still, it blew my mind. I came back, I told everybody, everybody just laughed and laughed. It's just not what I expected from a guy who is that, that high level. Especially, like I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, when you hear, all the stories about how ridiculously hard this guy trains, I would have never believed it. If somebody told me that Bokao was doing shortcuts and avoiding runs, mm -mm, I would have said it's not true, 100% not true. Now you can believe me or not, but I'm telling you the truth, it happened, it was a great story, it still makes me smile. Now the training details of my two weeks with him, they were pretty basic, you know, you get up, you run, you come back, you do a little light shadow, you do some clench work. I did not get to clench with Bacow. There was another Thai guy there who was right at my weight. I did all my clench work with him. He was really good. Although when Bacow would come in the ring and clench with that guy, he would just huck him around. And this Thai guy for me was a struggle. He was 140 pounds. I didn't know how to do very good clench work back then. So he, he, he tossed me probably three times. I'd toss him once and we'd go back and forward. I didn't get to spar with Bacow. I did spar with the same guy that Bacow would spar with. And uh, we were just boxing, but I would light that guy up. Um, you know, I actually felt sorry for him a couple of times because the trainers were telling me to try and put him down and I'd ease back. But I didn't actually get to do anything one-on-one -on -one training with Bacow to test his skills against mine. It was just, I'm training beside him on the bag. He would come up, give little tips here and there. Nothing that I really need to impart to you right now because I share all the knowledge that I've gained throughout the years in my YouTube channel or in my YouTube videos anyway. Just one of the big things I learned training with Bacow and seeing these guys is they do their morning session, then they would have nothing to do basically from 8 a.m. all the way to 3 p.m. They would just hang out in their rooms, relax, rest, and it really clued me in on the fact that recovery and sleep go so hand in hand, and getting that rest and taking that downtime is just so imperative if you wanna be one of the high, high level athletes. I'm not talking amateur, uh, very high level amateur or, or pro, I'm just talking highest level pro. If you wanna be there, I think, it is very beneficial to be getting those naps in the middle of the day, taking that rest time, not going from work to train to work to train where your body starts burning down and you're not getting that recovery time. That's a big takeaway that I also had from training in Thailand 
and seeing the downtime that Bukow had between sessions. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. We don't always get to see a lot about the fighters we love, and Bukow is obviously one of the fighters, the most popular in the world. Even though he's a Muay Thai fighter, he is a name that everybody seems to know. It doesn't matter if you're an MMA, you're a Muay Thai fighter, you're a kickboxer, people know Bukow. So it is fun learning a little bit more about him because there's just no documentaries in English where it really lets him show his personality and all the little things you might learn. So if you guys enjoyed the episode, give it a like make sure you get subscribed train hard guys and I'll see you back here soon for another video